So warfarin induced skin necrosis. At a glance, it looks quite confusing because warfarin is primarily used as an anticoagulant. And in this condition, what we get in warfarin induced skin necrosis, we get basically that warfarin is inducing indirectly the coagulation in the blood vessels, which is resulting in the skin necrosis. To understand this concept, this uh, paradox of warfarin induced skin necrosis, you need to understand few basic concepts again and again at the end, I would connect all those dots. Number one, what is what does warfarin do normally? Uh, warfarin basically declares war against vitamin K because it basically inhibits the epoxide reductage, which is necessary in enzyme to activate vitamin K. And now we know that vitamin K uh, is necessary for certain production of certain key coagulant factors. Those coagulant factors are 2, 7, 9, 10. But also equally important is this, that vitamin K is also important to produce a naturally occurring anticoagulant. So in our body, there are some naturally occurring coagulant factors are there, which are names under the Roman numericals 1, 2, all this, uh, 13, up to 13. And also we have some naturally occurring anticoagulant. Primarily two important words are protein C and protein S. Now protein C and protein S, their synthesis is also dependent on the vitamin K. This is an important concept actually. So now what is going to happen that let's say you are on warfarin therapy and warfarin does not act on the pre-existing coagulant or anticoagulant factor. Whatever they already have been formed, they have no action on that. What they can do that once you have given them, they will not allow further production of those things. So let's say now at this point, this juncture, you have given somebody warfarin. So what is going to happen that warfarin from now onwards, the warfarin would stop production of those vitamin K dependent clotting factors and also anticoagulant factor. So what is going to happen uh, that now comes a very important concept of the half-life of all those factors. Here comes the catch, the half-life of protein C, which is a naturally occurring key anticoagulant factor in the body, their half-life is around six to eight hours. But the vitamin K dependent clotting factors, their half-life is around roughly 24 to 60 hours in that range. So once you have given somebody warfarin, after six to eight hours, what is going to happen? The person would be completely depleted of protein C. And protein C is necessary to keep the balance that protein C is a naturally occurring anticoagulant. So it naturally stops any blood clot formation in the body. So once you have given the warfarin, after six to eight hours, the person would be devoid of protein C. But the real action of warfarin to stop those synthesis of coagulation factor would only start roughly around, as I mentioned, around 36 to 48 or 60 hours. So there would be a gap in between that from this eight hours to let's say 36 hours, there would be gap or 40, 60 hours, there would be a gap where the action of warfarin has resulted in inhibition of synthesis of naturally occurring anticoagulant protein C but its action on stoppage of the of the clotting factors is yet to begin because there is a kind of window period you can think in that way so in this period paradoxically that means protein c level has decreased but the level of the clotting factor is yet to decrease because the clotting factors half life is much higher compared to the half life of the protein c so you'd be getting a period in between them in that period what is going to happen warfarin would be having a paradoxical hypercoagulable effect. That means warfarin would induce a state where rather than stopping coagulation, that would support coagulation. And that this state, what would happen that the persons usually, they can develop, that this happened very uncommonly, they can develop the, uh, the coagulation in the blood vessels of the skin. And that area particularly, they can undergo skin necrosis. That is the story behind between the warfarin induced skin necrosis. And if you are uh, deficient of protein C and protein S, then what, would, what is going to happen? Then, then you are even more at risk actually to develop this, even if you are genetically deficient of this, to develop warfarin induced protein C necrosis. So what is the, what's the key message in the story? The message in the story is this, that warfarin inhibits not only the naturally occurring coagulants, they also inhibit naturally occurring anticoagulant, particularly protein C. Protein C's half-life is lower, six to eight hours, compared to 
half-life of the coagulant factors. So the effect of warfarin initially is seen by certain decline of the protein C naturally occurring anticoagulant. That means anticoagulant levels decreases and coagulant level, coagulation factors level takes some time to get decrease. Its impact takes some time. So, so there is a period in between where your anticoagulants have down are down, but coagulants are yet to be down, yet to be decreased their level. And that state, if your anticoagulants are down, but coagulants are coagulation factors are still there, you are basically having a state of hypercoagulable state. That means your coagulation factors are still active, but anticoagulant factors, naturally occurring anticoagulant factor proteins is not working. And that stage you develop a uh, coagulation, unnecessary coagulation, unnecessary clotting in the skin blood vessels and that can result in skin necrosis. That is the story behind the warfarin induced skin necrosis. Thank you very much.